Hi, I'm Tanu Agarwal, and today we are at one of Bangalore's most popular Korean food joints, Korikin. What started from a small kitchen two years ago is up to three branches now. At, at the core is Korean flavors, but the vehicle that we are giving it in is something familiar. We were told that oh, just fried chicken doesn't work well for Indians. Yeah, if you want. And uh, people to come and sit and have a proper meal. You need a little bit of carbs, a little bit of rice, a little bit of noodles, just, which can keep them and make them eat the full meal right. there and not just a snacking event. Where did the idea of Korikin originate from? So, whenever when I was Canada in Canada, I used to talk to my brother and my sister back home and. When I was to call them, she used to watch a Korean show, and every time there was a different show. And, uh, I used to speak to my brother. He went a level up. He he started learning Korean from Duolingo, and he he would speak Korean very fluently. So that was a little interesting on why Korean has suddenly entered into the Which lives of Indians. Which year was this? This was around 2020 during pandemic. Okay, during pandemic when I was stuck there, that's when um, I got to know about all of this. So I thought. This is something that's always been att- uh, attractive to me. Uh, let's start something. Let's look into this idea. And um, I had this training when I was working in line in k- kitchen. I was working under Korean chefs, so I learned a little bit about uh, Korean cuisine there. How fried chicken is made, how the sauces are made, um, how kimchi is made. So, can you explain the journey from idea to execution and how you made it happen? Yeah. So after we decided that we want to get into it, we did a lot of trials uh, in the kitchen in our houses as well. Uh, we were like confident that we are getting onto something. And uh, in my building itself, there was a small space. Um, it's a residential area, but I like might as well try something. Got it. Um, so we, there was a small 300 square feet commercial space in the building. So I thought let's let's start off with that. Very small menu. Uh, we started off with just Korean fried chicken, uh, burgers made out of Korean fried chicken, and uh, some wings, um, nothing else, and some drinks um, to go with them. Um, we just wanted to see how acceptable it is, what people are looking for, and um, to get feedback to start that loop. Because how much ever you're going to be doing uh, research, unless and until you talk to your customers, you give them the food. Um, it's not going to work out. How did you spread the word among people that okay, here's Korikin and this is what we offer? All right, I think uh, going back to that time, uh, we when we were building the uh, kitchen, I uh, given the order for the branding outside, and that came in really early. And uh, we thought let's just put it out, and that'll be uh, like a marketing thing for us. Um, people would walk by, um, go around the area. They would just keep seeing it and keep coming to us and asking when it is going to open. We were told that oh, just fried chicken doesn't work well for Indians. Yeah, if you want Indi- uh, people to come and sit and have a proper meal, you need a little bit of carbs, you need a little bit of rice, and a little bit of noodles, just stuff like that, which can keep them and make them eat the full meal right. there and not just a snacking uh, uh, event. So we started off with the kimchi fried rice, the kimchi noodles. We got some ramen options. We got we were the first to get uh, corn dogs as well, so a little new and uh, tweaking the menu a little bit here and there uh, to keep the customer customer interested. I also the um, in the initial days, I think I spotted Korikin at a Zomaland event. Yes. yes. So how how yeah. did that event go for you, and what did you learn from Zomaland? Zomaland initially we were very hesitant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Why were you we hesitant? Hesitant in just the terms that we were very new. And uh, there's a lot of um, money that goes into. It. I think even Zomaland was particularly new back then. Yes. Yeah. But uh, a lot of budget had to be dedicated for that. And what would the cost be to set up a Zomaland stall? Zomaland has a fixed cost that each stall costs about fifty, sixty thousand. Okay. And then uh, you have additional costs of if you want extra electricity and overnight power and this and that and everything. So it was coming up to about seventy, eighty thousand of. Allocation of money that needs for two days done. for a two day event. Yeah. Yes. What does your menu today look like, and what is the hero product or like your strategy today? How we engineered the menu was because it's a new cuisine. We wanted a little bit of familiarity with the cuisine as well. So 
fried chicken is very familiar what we did was it we, we we put korean touch to the fried chicken um we brought korean fried chicken burgers burgers is very popular in india so let's introduce korean flavors in the burger tacos are really gain, gaining traction so let's do something out of tacos so we we put um barbecue sauce in the tacos as well so in those things we wanted a little bit of familiarity uh, so that people are not all that say intimidated by the menu if they come in they say tacos they like okay i know what tacos is so let 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 me try that out but if it was something which was not uh, acceptable or they've not heard of they would want to stay away from it right so that's what that's what our engineering happened so you designed your menu in a way that when a customer walks in it becomes easy for him to make a decision that's right that's right we at, at the core is korean flavors but the vehicle that we are giving it in the beef the buns or the tacos or the rice or the noodles is something familiar but the flavors are different so bowl of ramen usually costs around 4 to 5 600 in a restaurant in bangalore how does your positioning of a ramen bowl at 300 play out in the market um we we've been very strong on our um, initial core uh, identity of korean food for the masses um so everything that we did was to make sure that our pricing is doesn't become expensive people should not feel like it was not worth it we were in, there were two options for us either we go the high volume route or the high margin route we chose to be the high volume route um and that's what works for qsrs as well so how would you define your target audience today and if you were to tell me what's your ideal customer persona like i see uh, sometimes when i speak to customers they say that my daughter got me here okay uh, she is a big fan of uh, the korean uh, shows k pop so she wanted to try it out so that's 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 a very big target audience for us uh, i see people young couples coming in who are adventurous want to try something new um and because we have it in that affordability range a lot more people want to come in if you were to tell me how many orders does korean fulfill every day what would it be um Each store we do about uh, 100 to 120 uh, orders a day. For okay. Days. What would be the split between online and offline? Uh, we have about 70-30 split, 70 offline and 30 online. Understood. What does your average order value look like? So it's different for both online and offline. Um, online it is in the range of 480 to 520. Okay. Then for offline we do about uh, 780 to 850 on offline. Okay. For the couple. understood yeah so per person it's roughly 400 per person offline and 500 per person online yes understood so uh, what are the kind of commissions aggregator platforms charge you people just see commissions at the uh, end of the day but it's not commissions there's a lot more than commissions uh, um typically is around 24% is what uh, swiggy is about to uh, charge for commissions then there's a 2% payment gateway charge and then post that there's an 18% gst on that So all this comes up to about forty, forty-five percent, even sometimes fifty percent um, of your um, top line. If I were to start my own Korean today, how much of capital would I be needing, and where would I be spending it on? Uh, typically, a space like this, which is a fifteen hundred seventy ten seventy nine hundred square feet in um, high street area like in Nechesar, um, it takes about fifty sixty lakhs of uh, capex. Okay. So if I have to divide that into the different uh, categories, I'd say about out of that uh, initial capex, thirty um, percent of it goes into um, the initial deposit, which can either which can range from six months to ten months of okay. the rentals. Thirty uh, percent goes into equipments. Okay. Um, be it your the entire kitchen, your fridges, the freezers, your ovens, your fryers, all of that, your ACs, and all these things take about third of your um, 30% of your initial capex okay 30% goes into interiors okay and about 10% we keep for uh, the opening uh, working capacity as well understood yeah so um, now comes to the most in- important question what does the unit economics of korikin look like so let let's make it easy let's keep it in the order value of 100 rupees okay and uh, first thing is our raw material cost which is about 35% Um, which leaves us with about 65% of gross margin. Now, with this 65%, we have to allocate for our fixed expenses and everything. Um, 12 to 13% goes in our rentals. About 12 and another 12 and 30% goes into our salaries as well. So that our 25% goes into salaries and rentals. 
um the next expense big expense is our online aggregator commissions which is about 10% of our overall overall top line um we have 5% uh, allocated for our utilities 5% for our marketing budget we are left with 20% after this um out of this 20% we have 5% which goes for gst and uh, that leaves us with end net ebitda of around 15% what does your average turnover in a month for each store look like before we take up a space we want to see that we will, will we hit that break even or how much will that break even be i have a rough calculation that i do whatever the fixed costs are um, how much my salaries are going to be how much my rents going to be um and um, how much my utilities are going to be all that i calculate only the fixed costs i don't take it to raw materials accounting or anything i just multiply it okay that's my rough calculation that i do hiring and maintaining staff has been one of the biggest challenges in this industry how do you conquer that challenge in terms of hiring um most of the recipes have been um created by my wife and i and we send them out to each restaurants and if we are hiring someone new we just train them to follow those as of these the teams um that's how it is we we, want, we don't want a lot of skilled people in the kitchen or in the service we just want them to be able to follow the recipes that have been given to them right So let's go. Show you the kitchen. Okay. All right. Uh, so basically, when an order comes in, this is where all our orders go. Mm-hmm. And there's one person who's here dedicated to just take the orders, see what the orders are, pack those orders, and uh, instruct it. So it's basically, the, like the captain of the kitchen. Got it. He sees the orders, and every every uh, item has a section, and every item has a dedicated person who's. Uh, performing that particular duty say if it's a rice so there's someone dedicated for rice there's a noodle someone dedicated for noodles someone for ramen someone for fried chicken and stuff like that so that's what he knows the main captain knows who the task has to be delegated to and he gives it out so where this is our most important uh, section this is the frying section um nice these are all the sauces that come in from the central kitchen got it um so these are all ready made sauces that we sent from the central kitchen and they used to, to prepare the items here interesting 